These guys are really having fun, aren't they? This panel makes a funny observation about how insanely tough Prince Rupert's drops are, to the point where they would easily survive and even damage a hammer or other metal equipment. Making a Prince Rupert's drop is actually quite simple. By dropping molten glass in cold water, a peculiar piece of glass, tear alike with a bulbous head and a thin tail will be formed. Given how it's made, one can speculate that the tear was discovered a long time ago by accident, since most glass makers would have a bucket of water around to cool their tools, making some glass falling in water a highly probable event. The special thing about this structure is that it is staggeringly difficult to break its head, and yet, its tail is so delicate that even a minor crack will cause the whole shape to fully disintegrate. The reason behind their toughness around the head area is attributed to the making process and the difference in cooling between inner and outer glass. The outer layer of the drop cools and solidifies first, contracting and hardening quickly. The inner glass, however, cools more slowly, wanting to contract but unable to due to it being confined by an already hardened outer layer, thus becoming under immense tension. This creates an incredible amount of internal stress. The outer layer is highly compressed while the inner core is under tension, making it unbelievably resistant to direct impacts. However, this tough structure possesses an Achilles heel. If you break even a tiny part of the tail, the entire drop explodes explosively shatters into fine powder. This happens because breaking the tail releases all the stored energy from those internal stresses at once, leading to a crack that propagates through the glass at speeds around 6500 km per hour. These fascinating properties have helped scientists and engineers understand stress distribution in materials, leading to innovations like pre-stressed concrete and tempered glass used in phones and car windows. A black hole on the other hand doesn't really care about everything I said, because it will pull quite anything within its event horizon and compress it into a singularity, which is a point of infinite density where the known laws of physics break down completely. It's a place where space and time as we know them cease to exist, and where matter gets crushed to a theoretical point of zero volume but infinite density. Even light itself can't escape once it passes the event horizon, which is why we call it a black hole in the first place. No matter what it is, nothing could survive a black hole, not even a Nokia 3310 or a Prince Rupert's drop.